The All Black Podcast is powered by our official cloud software partner, SAP, helping our teams in black become the best run teams in sport. To listen to this episode and all the All Black Podcasts, subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere you get your podcasts. Kira Fana, welcome to the All Black Podcast, powered by SAP Season 2, Episode 2, and it's a special feature pod for Double Drop Thursday. Today we're chatting about the movie Red, White and Brass, which opens in theatres March the 23rd. A true story about a group of Tongans who formed a brass band so they could see their team play in the 2011 Rugby World Cup by becoming the pre-match entertainment, even though they couldn't actually play any instruments themselves. How good is that commitment? Here to discuss this movie, how it got to our screens, is writer and producer, Noah Finau. Welcome to the show, Noah. How are you going, mate? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. This is pretty awesome to, to be a part of the All Blacks um, podcast. So, yeah, pretty stoked. Oh, oh mate, no, it's, it's awesome to have you on. It's a hell of a project, and you must be stoked just that it's getting to the screens next week because I, I can imagine something like this is a massive undertaking, a huge project. Like, how long ago, you know, did this all start, and, and what's the process been? Um, I think kind of the actual, like, movie idea came about probably, like, 2015, 16. I was at... Um, the Royal Edinburgh Tattoo in Wellington at the stadium yeah. in, in Wellington. My missus worked at the, as an event manager or something like that. And I had to go just, you know, to support the missus. Of course. Um, it's like a spectacle. Like there's not many Islanders that are in that um, crowd. It's not really the demographic for them, but <laughs> like, so I was kind of a lone wolf in there, but um, it was a spectacle there and it was way more than I expected. And then out the blues, this freaking, um, Tongan brass band rocked out, like, out of the castle. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> um, so my mind was just, like, buzzing out that there were these Tongans marching at this huge spectacle. Um, so I just started jotting down on my um, phone an idea, and I called it the, the Highlanders, but, like, Islanders spelt with an H. Because <laughs> um, my cousins are um, Billy and Mako Vunipola that play for. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yep. And those are some Tonganaz looking dudes and they've got British accents and it's funny. So I thought, what's funnier than that is a Tongan dude with a Scottish accent. <laughs> so I started like writing that up and, and I went and hollered at my mate, Danny Mulhair, about this like crazy idea that I had and he was cracking up at it. But he was like, where did it all come from? And I was like, oh, my, my church brass band. Um, we played at the Tonga France game and like went into the whole kind of spiel of that. Um, and he was like, why don't you just do that? And I was like, because that's just my family. That's boring. Like a Scottish, a Tongan with a Scottish accent is freaking hilarious. <laughs> and um, he was like, nah, man, you got to do the, tr- the real thing. It's always better and, and, and more fun when you, when you tell something from a true place. So that's kind of where it started. And then um, once the picky films lot came on board, um, the kind of seas parted, man. And it happened quick, like in terms of feature film timelines, like, bro, it was, from my first meeting with them, like just before kind of the, the COVID lockdown in 2019, um, it just op- like went boom and it was done in like three years to like here. Wow. Which the feature films are like five to seven years and that's counted as like fast. Mate, that's that's awesome. And let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Who are Peaky Films and, and like did you, had you written a script or have you just written a concept? Did you pitch it to them? Like what's the process? You know, we're a rugby podcast. We don't know too much here. So like how, how, what does that all look like? Because it's great. We've all got ideas. You know, we've all got things that um, that we'd love to, to scale up and make big, but you're able to make it happen. You know, what did that look like? Yeah, well, I, I um, had written the, the script with my mate Danny um, in Wellington and I was – um, I was actually working for um, New Zealand Rugby because I used to host Small Blacks TV. <laughs> so that was kind of the day job at that time. Um, and I was like, man, I'm getting too old and ugly for like kids TV. So I needed to figure out an exit strategy. So I thought, man, writing and producing. And so I got, I wrote this script and I moved up to Auckland. Um, and I just wanted to meet Tongans in the industry because, you know, everyone that's in bloody Wellington has to come to Auckland if they want to work in the industry. Yeah. Um, and I got a job as a bloody um, cast driver on The Legend of Monkey, <laughs> a, a Netflix show. And I was telling everyone already at the time that I'm a producer, I've got a script and everything. Um, but one of the actors in that, her name was um, Rachel House. She's like an OG, yeah. kind of, you know, done Thor and Wilder People and all that kind of jazz. And I was her driver and I, I pitched her this idea. I was like, 
man, it's kind of like cool runnings, but Tongans instead of Jamaicans and trumpets and trombones instead of bobsleds. It's like going to be a funny movie, all of that kind of, you know, the hustler spiel. Um, and she thought it was great and all of that stuff, but I was just their driver at the time. <laughs> and I was like, I've got a script and everything. I've read it that's pretty rough. But um, she was awesome. And then I bumped into her maybe like two, two years later um, at a rap party. And she still remembered the idea. And she was like, no, what happened to your movie? And I was like, man, it's just sitting in my Dropbox. Like, I've just had to work. I've got a kid now and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and she's, because she's obviously friends with Taika Waititi and, and the Picky Films lot. Um, and she was like, man, meet me tomorrow morning at this cafe 39 on Ponsonby Road. And it was, we're, we're at a party, mind you. And she was like, meet me there at nine o'clock. I was like, damn, I better sharpen up now then so I don't miss the meeting. I went there and um, she pretty much had, had told me, she told me, she was like, go see Morgan Wadu. She's over here. Tell her that I sent you. You got your script. Tell her to read it. And then I went and I went straight from the cafe, gave it to Morgan. I was like, hey, Morgan, um, Rachel sent me here. I've got a script that's pretty cool. Like if you can ever read of it and let me know what you think. And then maybe like a week later, um, Carthew, who's Taika's, because Picky Films is Taika Waititi's production company, and, and Carthew's his um, business partner. Um, sorry about that. Um, Carthew's his business partner, and he read it like a week, a week in, a week later, and then I was on a Zoom and signed the contract like three weeks later. Happy it's days. It's pretty crazy. Like, it's really, it's, it's about as crazy as the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, and let, let's talk about that. It's awesome, because not only is it, a great story. It's a true story, you know, and it's one that, that you personally lived out yourself. So let's talk a little bit about the movie, what it's all about and, and some of the themes that you're, you're trying to get through. Yeah, so um, it's about this this character named Maka. It's, it's kind of semi-autobiographical based on kind of me. And if anyone remembers 2011, um, the, the Tongan, that was kind of the first time of seeing crazy Tongans, I think, for, for most New Zealanders when we shut down the airport. Um, and I think even um, Richie McCaw in that, that Weight of a Nation doco says yeah. um, when the Tongans arrived, uh, we knew that the World Cup was starting. Um, right. And kind of it all went from there. And like for us, earlier on down in Wellington, there was that ballot system. Yes. You know, you had to enter a ballot to like be able to buy tickets. And I entered the ballot and I, I didn't get a, I didn't get a, um, I didn't get picked to buy tickets. I was gutted. Um, but we managed to hustle like with the city council in Wellington. That was the time of like, let's make Wellington the coolest little capital in the world kind of thing. So a lot of the community leaders and the council and New Zealand rugby were all trying to figure out ways of making Wellington awesome. And my dad, who's a minister, um, said that we've got a brass band. Um, we can pay for the Tonga France game if you give us free tickets. We'll do it for free. Um, and that was sounded like a good deal to them. And so they gave us the gig. My dad came to church and said, We've got tickets to the game and we just need a brass band. <laughs> but um, yeah, like, like you were saying before, man, we had no instruments. No one knew how to read music. No idea. The only thing is that we had one guy from Tonga who um, was studying at Victoria University um, classical music and he literally taught us our like 10 minute set. But um, that's pretty much the kind of story of, of the film um, of but I, I, I couldn't have my dad as the main character, so I flipped it to my idea. Um, and, and so it was Maka's journey. Mate, you did right when you talk about it. I was I was lucky enough to be at the All Blacks versus Tonga opening game of the Rugby World Cup, and they made it. There, there was literally, it was all the circumstances that were needed to kick off uh, that tournament. I, I couldn't get on the train from Britomart to go down to Kingsland because there was too many people, so I walked the the walk that went from Britomart down to Eden Park and it was just red everywhere, energy, drums just going nuts and it literally, it was a beautiful day and it set up the tournament so well and it ended up being a pretty special tournament for Tonga, didn't it? But what I wanted to ask you a little bit, mate, is it's all well and good to get tickets and, and but then all of a sudden you've got a job to do as well, not just like down at the local park but in front of quite a few people <laughs> at the rugby stadium before Tonga plays France was was there. It was like, yep, all right, we'll figure this out. Or were you like, oh, oh no, I've I've written some checks here. That why not be able to cash? Like, what's you know, what was the feeling, and how did you recruit people, and who was the boss, and like, it's a hell of a process. Yeah, I think um, for us, it was never really in doubt that we wouldn't be able to pull it off. I think that's one <laughs> of the um, 
it's a blessing and a curse for Tongans that we just we just think we're, we're confident and we think we can do anything because we're Tongan. It was like the same thing when I was telling people I was going to make this movie. I, I had no credits, no nothing. Like I hadn't done anything. And I was like, yeah, but I'm Tongan. I'll be able to do it. Um, Mate, and is so, that the uh, leaving your brain at home and, and following in your heart piece, is it? Like just give yeah. it a rip. Yeah, yeah. And that's that my funda, which is I think from like a Māori context, it's, it's kind of the the, the, the a similar essence to Wairua. Yeah. Um, and just that that the energy you feel, um, but now it was never really like and Tongans, man. Our mums and our aunties, the women in Tongan community are pretty staunch. Um, so when they say that we've got practice Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you turn up anyway, even though you're like that. There's you just turn up, and that's I think one of the things that come across in the film as well as is our community. Um, which I'm pretty chuffed at because, you know, a lot of, like you are saying, there was a sea of red in 2011 and a lot of um, New Zealanders see the flags and everything. And, and this film is is a bit of a chance to see the other side of the flags, like um, seeing inside the community and the craziness that we get up to. Mate, and is that it? Obviously, the, you know, the story is around forming this band and being in the pre-match entertainment. Before we ask you how that actually went on the day, is that what we're going to see in the film? Are we going to see how our community can rally to take on a, a pretty ambitious project like is is that are we going to get a, some insights into the Tongan culture of you know and we've got so many Tongan Kiwis so many Tongans living here in New Zealand such a strong connection to the All Blacks you know Jonah being you know the, the highest of of that connection but is that you know what we're going to see and and sort of effectively that mafana in essence you know what what that actually means to be lived is is that some of the stuff we're going to see in the movie yeah I think it's like a, a uh, this was one of the beauty, beauties of working with um, kind of a well-oiled machine such as Picky Films yeah. is we managed to to find the balance of keeping it like authentically Tongan so that when you're watching it, you really are seeing a Tongan community um, and how we are as as a as a church, as a family, and as a community and and banding together to achieve a pretty outrageous goal, but also. Um, as a it's a beautiful thing as well for New Zealanders you know because I'm I'm born and bred in New Zealand um, but I was raised a Tongan and I think it's pretty awesome that in New Zealand we can have there is a space to have a thriving community that has its own identity and that's kind of one of the beauties of growing up in 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 the melting pot that is New Zealand you know like there's a lane for everyone but we're also New Zealanders as well you know every, a lot of we all call Aotearoa home and um, but but we have a society, like not everywhere in the world, like you can have a community that can just shut down an airport and New Zealanders just get amongst it, you know, and just like, yo, <laughs> it's crazy, but, oh. but um, so I think that's kind of one of the beautiful things as well. And a reminder just as well for New Zealanders um, and the general kind of communities is that the, the uniqueness and specialness of our own communities. And I think over the last month um, with everything that's happened kind of in, in the North Island, at least, um, it's reminded us that shucks, yeah, now we do have some pretty awesome communities around the country, you know, and, and when when it actually comes time to band together and, and do something, we do. We we, we we turn up for each other and, and we help out and we figure out, we figure it out. That's that number eight why I mentality, you know, it's just like we figure it out um, and we'll get through it. And this is the same kind of theme, but just more on a laugh, a lighthearted, positive way of um, telling that. Absolutely. And the big question, mate, how did it go? You know, what, I, what I'm going to see in the movie, is that a true representation of what happened on the day? Did it go well? Were the team happy with their performance? And, and secondly, how good are experience, you know, to do that in front of so many people and then flow into a game of footy, which I'm giving away no secrets, uh, Tonga upset mm. France, which was, was pretty cool. And it's actually a game that sticks in my memory from, from that 2011 World Cup here at home. Yeah, no, man, the, also, the, the performance was awesome and definitely because I studied dance. Um, so for me, I, I I studied performing arts and I before 2011, I traveled around the world and performed in like, um, I performed at a number of sevens tournaments. Like, and if anyone remembers the sevens when it used to be mean, like it was hissing when, it you was, know, yeah. you'd stand there and on the field and you'd perform and the All Blacks would come out to backing black and it'd be like, the stadium's just rocking. So... Yeah. I performed at the British Lions like tournament and everything oh, awesome. when they came. So when I got to the stadium, I wasn't really too fussed. I was like, yeah, this is me. Um, but then it wasn't until I kind of walked out onto the field that 
I realized, oh, shucks, I've only really performed to other people, not to my own people. So looking around the stadium and seeing the Tongan flags and then my my brothers and my uncles and cousins in the band, I realized, I was like, wow, this is actually a pretty unique, special performance. So it definitely was my highlight, for, the highlight for me. And we were a chuffed, man. Like we were just kind of, um, it's like, you know, when you, you just you don't really remember anything. You're just going off like muscle memory, and yeah. it's just happening because the crowd were going nuts, and um, we all loved it. And then it just cherry on top with the with Tonga beating France. It was crazy, mate. And you would have had a good connection to the team, wouldn't you? Like people within the band, like surely would have had strong connections with the team. So no doubt they knew what was going on as well. And and while I'm not going to put it put it down to the victory, like it, it must have been pretty cool for them to have something uniquely Tongan in, in the build up to a match. Um, in Wellington, but um, almost oh, absolutely felt like a home game for them, no doubt. Yeah, it was awesome. One of the players actually in the team um, we grew up together was from our church. So he just buzzed out that we were there, like when they were warming up. And he like watched us walking out. He, I, I remember talking to him and he was stretching in the change rooms. He was like, how the hell are you guys here? Like, what the heck? <laughs> you know, it was pretty nuts. But um, now that the team were celebrities for us and Fina Maka, the captain of the, the team, you know, is a bit of a cult hero for us and was for a long time was our number one like man until Jason Domalolo came along and, yep. and eclipsed the, the, the efforts of our 2011 team. Yeah, mate, he was huge in that game, wasn't he? And, and it's so cool. This is um, going to be an awesome movie. Encourage people to get out and see it because it's just a, it's a great opportunity to reflect on what was an awesome tournament as well, wasn't it? Like you say, um, one of the best things about the tournament was the way it represented all the people that live here in New Zealand. And these days we've got into its second season, Moana Pacifica as well, playing in the competition. And it just, again, another thing that highlights the connection between Tonga and New Zealand. It's awesome, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're very, very excited to finally share this film with everyone. Um, it's been a long time coming. I um, mean, hope hope the um, Kiwis get out there and, and support it. So, mate, just just finally before we wrap up, and I know your parents are making a make a guest appearance in the in the movie as well, which is pretty hard case. But the when is it on? Where can we see it? All that sort of stuff. Just remind us um, so that people can get out and support this this awesome um, local production. Yeah, so it's um, out in all cinemas across the country on Thursday, the twenty third of March. Um, get out to your local um, cinema. Um, it'll be ev- everywhere from Auckland down to what to Dunedin, Invercargill, and in everywhere in between. Mate, how good? How good? Congratulations, Noah, on, on getting this out. Like I know, um, I, I have no doubt that there was a challenges along the way, and it's a massive undertaking. But to take it from an idea, a rough script, you know, pitching it while driving a car, um, and then making it a reality, <laughs> and getting it. Um, the cinema is perhaps, you know, that's the essence of its film itself, that, that Tonga number eight wire attitude to just have a crack and, and see where you land. But you've done fantastically well. Congratulations and encourage everyone to get out and see it. Thank you, mate. Oh, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No worries, buddy. The All Blacks podcast is powered by our official cloud software partner, SAP, helping our teams in black be the best run in sports. Hosted by Rob Dunn in the Hargrave Street Studio. Produced by Carl Thompson from Blue and Ginge, the podcast producers. Video editing by Mac Leesberg, graphics by Western Design, content advising from Andy Burt, and commercial manager for the podcast is Valeska Hoth. Follow the All Blacks podcast on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and anywhere you get your podcasts.